Mark chapter 4, I've, I've taken a, a fair bit of probably deserved guff about um, Mark and sandwiches and, and, and carrying on about all of that and the way that Mark uh, has shared his gospel. And if, if you don't know what that is, I promise you I will um, talk about it nearly every other sermon in, in the book of Mark. Um, but this isn't one of them. Sometimes when you, when you read scripture, it's, it's, well, it's always important to pay attention to the details, but sometimes there's a little more digging required. Sometimes uh, since we're so culturally removed and it's been you know, switched, at least our New Testament from Greek to English, it, it, it makes sense to, to really uh, pay close attention to, to the way that it's lined out. But then other times it's really straightforward. This text that we're going to look at today is pretty straightforward. It's one of those where, where Jesus says it, and we need to own it. We need to listen. Listen. Uh, remember, he'll, he'll say over and over and over, if you've got ears to hear, you better listen up. So that's the, the text that we're going to step into today. Remember, he had taken his disciples aside. Uh, when you study the book of Mark, and ever, whenever you, you, you look at crowds, crowds are always a negative thing. Jesus is always trying to get his disciples to the side, and that's what he does here where, where he's explaining to them. So as followers of Jesus, disciples ourselves, let's step into this text, but let's pause for a moment and ask him to help us out. Father, it is good to start the day, uh, whether in person or online, just praising you because you are worthy of song and you're worthy of our adoration and, and our worship. Lord, we ask that now you would open your word and that you would speak to us. If we're just hanging on today, God, would you comfort us? If, uh, if we're comfortable, would you afflict us? And would you help us to, to pay attention and to realize that there's a lost and broken world out there that's in desperate need of your son? Would you move among us? And at the end of the day, Lord, our, our prayer is that what happens here would would make you smile. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark 4, verse 21, he also said to them, is a lamp uh, brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed? Isn't it to be put on a lampstand? For there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed and nothing concealed that won't be brought to light. Amen. You, when, when you read this verse, uh, how many, of you, I, I say how many of you, that I know recognize most are online now, so you don't need to raise your hand in your living room, but how many of you do start singing this little light of mine, right, just pops in your head and I'm going to let it shine? I, 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 I thought about actually leading us in it and then common sense took over and said, Steve, that's not a good idea for you. So don't do that. But this, this little light of mine, right, we teach that to kids because it's true. Ah, and Jesus is going to take this idea of light and, and help us to, to really think here and to, to challenge uh, you and I because light is so important. I, I was thinking, um, oh, I, I, it's probably been 10 years or so uh, ago. I, I was heading out by myself hunting um, this piece of property we had out west and going out there to hunt by myself and I, I, I like hunting by myself I like just getting away you know by myself for a bit and uh, it, it was a cloudy night so it was dark and as soon as we left I got just far enough away from my truck to where it wasn't worth to go back but my my little lamp went out I lost my light and I thought well I've hunted here you know so many times this isn't going to be an issue. I can just make it to my tree stand. But I didn't realize just how dark it gets. And if you don't have light and you're trying to, you know, feel with your feet, 
And while you're carrying a gun, that's not a real good idea. You know, and I, I'm just trying to get through here. And it, it, I got lost, really, really lost. And I'm trying to think, well, hold on, this looks different, and this looks different, and there should be a creek here, but there's not for some reason. And finally, I, I was like, well, you know what, I'm just going to have to nestle up to a tree and kind of be uh, quiet here and blend in, and then I'll try to figure out, get to my stand once the light comes up, you know, once, once the sun comes up. And, you know, so I did that, and I hunkered down, and once the sun started to come out, and I, have, I still to this day have no idea how this happened, but I was sitting in just a huge briar patch. I'm looking around going, I don't even know how I got in here, let alone how I'm going to get out. I didn't remember dealing with all this as I was getting in here, but suddenly here I am, and now I can finally see, and I'm, you know, just surrounded by thorns. And I was thinking about that because sometimes life's like that. You, you know, you're buzzing along and you're just trying to get through and all of a sudden you, you find yourself in a spot where you sure could have used that light a little earlier. And now you're just trying to figure out how to get out of it. And it reminds us that light's so important. And, and I want to say, mo most here know Jesus is Lord. But take that picture and realize that all of our friends and our family and our neighbors and those that we work with that don't know Jesus as Lord are living that on a regular basis. Getting this light out, sharing this light is everything. Sharing the hope of Jesus is, is everything. So let's dig into this text. Notice there in 21, he also said to them, okay, when, when just Bible study principle here. He also said it means this is a continuation of what he said earlier. So what did we uh, look at last week? Well, it was the parable of the sower. And remember, in, in the, the parable of the sower, it's not just about the seed, but he, he starts it and then he ends it. But in the middle, he comes on and he says, hey, if you got ears to hear, listen because if you'll stand close to me, what Jesus is saying, I'll make the rest of this make sense. If you'll listen by faith to what I have to say, if you'll stand next to me, I'll make all of this make sense. So in light of that, as a continuation, he also said to them, and he gives them this picture of a light, a lamp. Oh, in their world, you, you, you have to get, you and I are so accustomed to light. We walk in, we flip on a switch. It's just easy. Ah, but they didn't have that. They didn't have electricity, didn't have street lights. When it got dark, it got dark. And so you had to plan ahead. And the, a, a light with a, a oil and being ready to go was so important. You go, why, why, why is it so important? Well, because light provide safety. You don't have to wor worry about walking into the briar patch. Hey, danger is in the dark. Right? Th th throughout, particularly in your Old Testament, you'll, you'll, you'll see this happen over and over again where it, it, darkness shows up as danger, but safety is in light. But light also provides direction. It helps us to see right. It helps us to, to know which way to go. So here, Jesus uses this picture of a light, this picture of a lamp. He says, hey, no, no, nobody brings a lamp in and then puts it under a bed or under a couch. Or if you're, depending on what translation, the older translation said under a bushel, right? When you're a kid and you're singing, hide it under a bushel. I'm going, I don't know what a bushel is, but I don't think I'm supposed to hide my light under it. When we ask this, we have to stop now and say, what in the world is Jesus talking about? What is the light? What's this lamp that he's talking about? Oh, because there's several different Bible verses that we could go to. Uh, the, the Psalms say, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And you say, okay, well, may, maybe it's God's word. Uh, but, but, but maybe the, the light here that he's talking about is the gospel. It's the good news. Well, let's Let's make sure that we get this right. 
because we, we, need, we need to make sure that we have this because this light is clearly meant to shine. The, this light, he, he's saying here, you don't want to hide it. So it helps us to consider, how does the original language do this? And this is a, a pretty crude translation, but it, it, it read this way. Does the lamp come to be placed under a bowl or under the bed? And take you back to school for a minute. Those of you, I know most of us, I've, I've got quite a bit of gray in my whiskers these days, and it's been a while since I've been in school. But there's a definite article here. So the lamp, not a lamp, the lamp does the lamp come? And as a matter of fact, in, in, in the way this reads, it's the lamp that's doing the acting. Does the lamp show up to do this? No. The lamp that can't be hidden in this verse is none other than Jesus himself. That, we have to make sure that we get that. It's not, uh, Jesus isn't to be suppressed. Jesus isn't to be hidden. You don't talk about Jesus and then tuck him away. We don't put him under a couch, or I, I guess in our lives, we would say it this way. We don't sing about it on Sunday and live differently on Monday. He's not to be hidden. He's supposed to be, to, to, to be placed. You go, okay, so do you have a verse that would say that Jesus would be the lamp? Well, John 1, 5 says the, that light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness didn't overcome it, speaking specifically of the coming of Christ. John 8, he says Jesus spoke to them again. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, or no, pardon me, I'm quoting the wrong. That's John 14. That's why I'm supposed to look at my notes. John 8, he says, I am the light of the world. Revelation 21, the city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it because the glory of God illuminates it, and the lamp is the lamb. Amen. You don't hide a lamp. You put it on a stand and you let it shine. And our task as those who are redeemed, those who know Jesus as Lord, just lift him high and let him shine. Let him do what he does. Let him, let him shine in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, and even in the really difficult spots like our living rooms. Our task is to let this Jesus do what only he can do. And you, the problem is, is oftentimes that you and I forget really what he can do. We, we forget what it's like to, to have him warm our hearts and to come to know him as Lord and to see him rewrite our entire stories because for many of us, we've been Christians a long time. Oh gosh, just over 100 years ago, I think it was 1904 in, in England, actually in Wales, a preacher by the name of Evan Roberts got folks to start praying and praying and praying and then going out and just loving the people around him, loving the, the folks around him. And within a matter of months, a hundred thousand people came to Christ. A hundred thousand. It's called the Welsh Revival. I, I, I kid you not, it so changed the area that the police didn't have anything to do and they formed choirs. I, I kid you not, the police literally formed choirs in Wales in 1905. This Jesus that you and I sing to on a snowy Sunday morning is capable of so much more than what we think or imagine. Or the way that we even act, you know, because oh, sometimes we, we like to think about him as sovereign and good and life-giving, but we act like he's anything but. See, Jesus is a warm light in a dark and cold world, and the job of the church is to let this light shine, to let it shine as bright as we possibly can. The difficulty, and I, 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 I don't I don't attempt to give anyone else a hard time without recognizing that I need to be speaking to myself here first and foremost. 
is that we can, oh, we, we wouldn't admit this, but we get more impressed with the darkness than we are with the light. We get more overwhelmed with the troubles of the world than we are uh, amazed with the beauty of the light. Oh, I tell you, one of the new words, doom scrolling. So we're, we got our phones going, oh, this many more coronavirus cases. This is going bad. Can you believe what happened here? Can you believe what happened there? Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing on the news. Nothing on the news that compares to Jesus. Amen. There, there's nothing that shocks him. There's never been a time where he goes, man, I didn't see that coming. He's Jesus. Our task is to, to let him shine. Now, there's a temptation here. Is you read this and you go, oh man, I, I'm into that. Hey, let's start a new program to reach the neighborhood. And to that, I want to gently scream, no. No. The simple method in the beauty of the gospel is for you and I as individuals to just go home and love people. Love your neighbors. When you go to work, be the best Christian you can there. When you talk to your neighbors, be the best Christian. I, I, I would do this another one of those times where you go, do I have folks raise their hands? And then I go, no, it's, this may just go bad. How many of your neighbors can you name? You know, one of the most dangerous things that, that, that we have right now is a garage door opener because it's awful easy to just pull in and hit the button and not see anyone. The beauty of the gospel is it doesn't need a program. The beauty of the gospel is it goes out by simple people just going out and loving the folks around them, loving the folks that, that they come uh, uh, in, in, in contact with. And the problem is, as Christians, it's easy for us to live in a Christian bubble. You know, to go to church on Sunday and then hang out with Christians, and then I'm going to go to my small group, and then I'm going to listen to this podcast. Can, can I tell you who the worst at this? The worst at living in a Christian bubble? Pastors. pastors because part you know we're we're thinking well hey i need to check on the folks at the church and i i better be calling on these folks and know that they have this going on and now i've got to prep for sunday what we need to be doing is making sure that we're hanging out with folks that don't know jesus is lord folks that that don't have the hope that you and i have that don't have tomorrow guaranteed. Oh, gosh, we got to sing, Jesus paid it all. If we really get that, that's something we need to be sharing. That's a light that needs to, needs to go out. I'm going to say this, uh, and I, I want to say, I'm going to say this gently, but I'm not going to say this gently. I want to say this clearly. It is nearly impossible to be obedient to Christ and not hang out with folks who don't know him as Lord. We got to get that. And if our lives are spent strictly in the church and with those that we're already going to spend eternity with, we're not being obedient to Christ. We've got to be comfortable with those who need his light. We've got to be living with folks who, who need that light. And Jesus follows it up. Remember, he says, because there's nothing hidden that's not going to be revealed. Now, when you and I hear that verse, we hear that verse and we immediately think of, of sin struggles. Because that's true, isn't it? Hey, your sin finds you out. It just does. For the best, it does. But that's not what he's talking about here because what's been hidden, if you study the book of Mark closely, you'll find that there are folks who are always coming uh, and, and Jesus is saying, hey, shh, be quiet. Remember when the demons uh, realized, hey, we know who you are. He says, you be quiet because Jesus wasn't going to get into one of those things where they were going to try to make him king because he had to head to a cross. 
And even today, when you look at the news, how many, how many times do you go, God, I don't get what you're doing. I don't get what's going on in the world right now. Let me tell you something. That's not always going to be the case. Revelation chapter 1. This is why you're supposed to mark this ahead of time. Revelation 1, uh, uh, grace to you and peace from him who, who is and who was and who is to come. Skip down to him who loves us and freed us from our sins. And if, if uh, um, Jesus, oh, I, I love this. I finally found it here. And he made us a kingdom of priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion uh, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every, every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. And Jesus responds, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who is and who was to come. That's that time when Philippians 2 says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our task is to, is to, make, to make that light shine now because he won't always be hidden. And to make it to where there is as many folks as possible who won't bend the knee in regret but they will out of joy and worship. Then Jesus drops a warning again. Look, look, look at verse 23. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. By the measure you use, it'll be measured to you. And more will be added to you, for whoever has will be given more, and whoever doesn't have, even, even what he has will be taken away from him. Here's another one of those texts. Remember, Jesus is speaking specifically to disciples. And he says, if you've got ears, listen up. Listen by faith right now. He's got his measuring cup out. He's saying that the, the, the amount that you use is what's going to be given back to you. If you use it well in abundance, I, I, I'll give you even more. If you're stingy, even, even what you have will be taken away. Now, I want to clarify something here. I do not believe that Jesus is talking about salvation here. But how many times have, have you been around and you see a church that, that doesn't take this serious? We grow inward facing. And Jesus says, I, I'll come in and break your party up. And you see that church just closed. Revelation 2 and 3 Example after example where, where, where Jesus says, you need to take this serious because I can shut a church down. He's promised that, that his church will. He's going to build it and it will attack the gates of hell. But that doesn't mean that you and I as Christians can't get sideways and miss out on, on the good parts. Amen. We've got to take this serious. We have to let that light shine. And if we want more Jesus right now, we need to be listening by faith. And he's saying, put this lamp, put this lamp on a stand and, and let it shine. And that, 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 in this way, Jesus always speaks in, in irony. He? The best way to live is to die. The best way to get is to, to give. The best way to get more Jesus for yourself is to give more of him away. The best way to close grow closer to Jesus is to share him because when you do share him and you see him go in and do what only he can do oh man it just warms your heart and you, you grow closer to him when, when, when you see him do what you and I can't do oh, you just want more of it don't you and there's a Negative and a positive. If you, you don't pay attention, I'm going to take this away. If you, if you do, I will give you even more. I don't know about you. I want more Jesus. 
I want more Jesus in my life. And I said, I, I want more Jesus in my home. I want more Jesus in my neighborhood. I want more Jesus in Indiana. In the U.S. I want more Jesus in D.C. right now. Amen. I want more Jesus everywhere because he does what only he can do and the simple pattern of the church is for you and i to just go out and love people to share this uh, let, 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 let's put some shoe leather on this the world is a dark and desperate place that needs nothing other than jesus We've got to get that down. We've got to be intentional, though. If we're going to do this, we have to be intentional about, about sharing Jesus. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Are you comfortable around people that are very, very different than you? Are you comfortable hanging out with folks who, who don't have the same hope in the same value system, in the same moral code than you do? Or do we avoid them? I'll never get the chance to share someone, the gospel with someone, if all I do is stand back and judge them. Are, are you comfortable? You, you see, because we can say that at home, but it's also true in the church. And this has to be true as a church as well, because how many times have you sat in church and go, I can't believe she wore that to church. I can't believe he came in here like that. What, what is, well, that dude stands out. Let me tell you something. When that, when that sort of scenario happens, we need to be, first of all, repenting quickly and deeply and then loving and coming alongside. Welcome. Welcome. God forbid. God forbid that someone could be led here and we would judge them and they would leave. second hard question that you and I need to wrestle with is, are you living a life that tells a story of redemption? So when we go to work, I don't know, where, where you work or hang out or, 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 or whatever it is that you do, when you're on the baseball diamond, when you're at your job, when you're with your friends, does our life tell a story of redemption? Or, or, Are we telling a, a story that, hey, man, we were, we were, we're still people who, who, yeah, we're struggling with it. And I get, I get, I get that it, we want to be authentic, but we need to take holiness seriously. We need to live lives that, are, that look like Jesus has actually done something in us. It's not our task to look like the rest of the world. It's our task to look a little more like heaven. Amen. That's our work. Third tough question, are you willing to open your home? Are you willing to invite folks in? Just let them come and hang out at your table, cook them a meal. We don't have to, it, one, I think one of the, the mistakes that we make is when we think, oh, I'm going to get serious about sharing the gospel, is that we got to run out and beat someone to death with the gospel message. Oh, sooner or later, we got to get to the gospel message, but it isn't when we first meet him. Come and live among people. Love them. Walk alongside them. Let them know you care. Don't hand them a track. Invite them over for dinner. And when you get the chance to tell them what God's done for you, don't back down. Can you tell your story, though? I mean, when we talk about sharing our faith, letting this light shine, one of the things that I find is oftentimes we're not prepared because, because we're not ready to tell our own story. So I'm going to challenge you. Maybe go back and write it down. Relive, rethink 
What, did it, what was it like when you first came? How did you come to know? What difference did it make? What, what decisions did you make? What did it look like to come to know Jesus as Lord? Well, we don't have to have all the, the answers. People, one of, one of the things I, I, I figured out, I, I used to read a bunch of apologetics verse, and then I figured out that I was coming up with answers to questions no one was asking. People are much more interested. Do you care? Do you have hope? Can you tell this story about Jesus? And church, get this. There is no person that you know that is outside the reach of Christ. There is no person so gone that Jesus can't touch their heart. It's our job just to let Him shine. To do what He does. To place that, that lamp high. But get this. And I, I, I know most of you that are here, I don't know who's online today, but if you're online joining us, or even if you're here and you don't know Jesus as Lord, I'll reach out through the comment section or, or reach out in some way. I'd love to just talk to you about this Jesus. Like I said, I, I don't have all of the answers, but what I do know, what I do know, makes me not so worried about the things I don't know. What I am convinced of makes those things oh, just pale in comparison. This light, this light of Jesus, it'll change everything you know. Amen. Give you hope and a future. Wipe away the shame and the struggle, the difficulties, and give you hope guarantee you tomorrow if if you're here do you, do you have your communion elements because now it seems appropriate for us to to just take our own hearts and to focus on that light again take ourselves back in time to that 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 last supper jesus got his disciples close again and he reminded them of the light the, the life that they have because of what he's done. The life that you have and the life that I have. It's not, it's not because you or I have been good. Oh, I know my story. It's not because we've made all the right choices. Jesus paid it all. When, when we take this little piece of bread, and I know we've got some different looking cups today, so you've got to kind of do this backwards. When we take this, this little piece of bread, what we're remembering is a life that was lived for you and I. The, the, the life that comes into this world, it's Jesus, and he lived a life that you and I would refuse to live. And then when we turn this over and we peel back the cup, we're remembering that that came at a price. I wonder what your life is worth? It's in that cup. It's the life of the Son of God. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you that you've given us this light. I thank you that you've given us hope. I thank you that, that, that we have tomorrow, we have eternity guaranteed with you because of what you've done. Now, as we take this bread and we drink this cup, would you, would you shine that light in our hearts again? Would you feed us again? Would you remind us again that we belong to you? And would you equip us and drive us from our complacency? Give us the eyes to see the world around us and help us to see the world through the hope of your Son. All in, in, his, in his wonderful name. Amen.